Hi, I'm Ali from Ansari Mathematics, and today I'm going to be going over a section three uh, SAT test from test number seven. And we're going to go over every single question on this test, which is 20 questions, and uh, it should be about a 30 minute video. And we're going to go over all the answers and, and all the correct explanations. All right, so number one, we have the equation above relates the number of minutes X Maria spends running each day and the number of minutes Y she spends biking each day. In the equation, what does the number 75 represent? Well, if you add the number of, because we're adding x and y, right? So if you add the number of minutes she spends running, which is x, and the number of minutes y that she spends biking each day, well, then that's just the total of minutes she spends running and biking each day. So the answer is simply C. Number two, we have, which of the following is equivalent to 3 times x plus 5 minus 6? So here we simply have to distribute the 3 and subtract the 6. So we distribute the 3 here and we subtract the 6. So we get 3x plus 15 minus 6. And this comes out to be 3x minus, or sorry, plus uh, 9. So the answer is C once again. For number 3, it looks like we have some sort of uh, system of equations we need to solve, which says which order pair x, y satisfies the system of equations shown above. We have x equals y minus 3, and we also have x over 2 plus 2y is equal to 6. So these are both lines, right? They're, they're not solved for y, but we could solve them for y, and they would just be two lines that, you know, maybe look something like this. And essentially what we're doing uh, as we solve for the system of equations is we're finding the point at which these two lines are equal. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to solve for y and for both equations and set them equal to each other. So the, for the first equation, I'm going to solve for y by adding 3 to both sides. And I get y equals x plus 3. For the second equation, I'm going to subtract x over 2 on both sides, and then I'm going to divide by 2 afterwards. So I get 2y is equal to 6 minus x over 2, and then I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. I get y equals... Er, uh, 6 over 2 is just 3, so 3 minus x over 4. So I'm going to write it right here. We get y equals 3 minus x over 4. Now, again, we know that at the point of intersection, the y values are equal. So we set them equal to each other. So we say x plus 3 is equal to 3 minus x over 4. And the reason why we do that is because we need to have one equation with one variable to be able to solve for that one variable. So now I'm going to subtract 3 on both sides, and I get x equals x equals negative x over 4. Uh, and then it seems like the only solution to this is if x is equal to 0. All right, so if we plug in 0, 0 equals 0, so that's the solution. Now we can find our y value by plug it, plugging it in into one of the equations um, above. Now, we shouldn't do that here, though, because our only answer that has an x value of 0 is b. So we should just go with b to save some time. All right, let's go to question 4. Which of the following complex numbers is equal to 5 plus 12i minus 9i squared minus 6i? Okay, so we should note a couple things here. We can add these just like, we can pretend like i is just a variable, but it's a special variable where i is equal to the square root of negative 1. And for that reason, we know that i squared is simply negative 1. And you can think of it as if we square both sides, right? We get rid of the square root. So then i just becomes negative 1. So let's rewrite this, knowing that that i squared over there is just negative 1. So I'm going to rewrite it as 5 plus 12i minus negative 1 times 9 is negative 9 minus 6i. Now I'm simply going to distribute the negative and, and get rid of the parentheses. So that's 5 plus 12i plus 9, right, a negative and a negative, and then plus 6i. Now I combine like terms like I would to any other expression. So 12i plus 6i, that's 18i, and then plus 14. And that right there is our answer. And, and again, we can write it as 14 plus 18i, right? Same thing. So the answer is D. All right, let me change the color. I'm getting tired of this color. <clears throat> All right, let's go to number five. Okay, so number five says f of x is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 3 all over 1. Or sorry, not all over 1. All over x minus 1. I don't know where I got 1 from. 
Okay, and what we want to do is evaluate f of negative 1. So what this simply means is that wherever we see x, we plug in negative 1. So negative 1 squared minus 6 times negative 1 plus 3 over negative 1 minus 1. Let's just simplify this a little bit. Negative 1 squared is just 1. Negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6. A positive 3 over negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Again, simplify it a bit more. 6 plus 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10, 10 over negative 2, this is equal to negative 5. So the answer is negative 5, which is A. Alright, number 6. A company that makes wildlife video purchases camera equipment for 32, sorry, a company that makes wildlife videos purchases camera equipment for $32,000 and $32,400. So $32,400. So I'm going to say this is camera equipment. Okay, let's see what it's asking. And again, I encourage you to read all these sentences and break them down before you know going to the next sentence. So the first sentence, what I got out of it, is that the camera equipment is this much. So I write that mathematically before I move on to the next one. The equipment depreciates in value at a constant rate for 12 years. So I can, I can the way I'm going to write that is I'm going to say M actually here. So it's a constant value, so I know it's just some slope. So m is equal to something negative. So I'm going to denote it like this. You know, you can do it any way you want, but I, I put negative in a quotation marks, and, and then lets me know that it depreciates for the next 12 years. Okay, let's keep reading. After which it is considered to have no monetary value. So, okay, let's so let's write. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a point. So I know that if year is zero, it's thirty-two thousand four hundred dollars. And then I know that if a year is 12, it's zero. So maybe pause the video and, and analyze what I did there for a sec. How much is the camera equipment worth four years after it is purchased? Okay, so this camera equipment depreciates at a constant rate. So that means we can model this with a line, right? And we have two points on that line, which we just figured out. So we simply need to find the slope of the line and the y-intercept of the line. We know the y-intercept is 32,400, right? That's what it starts with. Now we have to figure out the slope. To figure out the slope, we can simply uh, find y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's do that. So m is equal to y2 is 0. So 0 minus 32,400 over x2 minus x1, which is 12 minus 0. So this is negative 32,400 over... So this is what it depreciates by. And um, so now we can write our line equation, which is y equals negative 32,400 over 12 times x plus 32,400. Now from here, we can plug in the value that they asked for, because they said how much is it after after four years. So we can plug in four for x. So let's do that. So y equals a negative 32,400 over 12 times four plus 32,400. Now we can simplify this a little bit. Four over 12 is just three on the bottom, right? So this is equal to just negative 32,400 over three plus 32,400. Now, so, you know, I don't have a, we can't use a calculator here, right? This is the no calculator section. So let's estimate what 30,000 over 400 over 3 is. Um, let's see. So 36,000 over 3, that would be 12,000, right? So this should be a little bit, um, this should be a little bit less than 12,000. So I'm going to say negative 11,000. That's a good estimate. So it's going to be 32,400 minus 11,000 and this gives us 21,000 so our answer should be around 21,000 and the only one that's around that is C so that was sort of a long problem all right let's go to the next one number seven we have x squared plus 6x plus 4 which the following is equivalent to the expression above so it looks like um, let's see <clears throat> It looks like, okay, let me, let's do this with a trick, actually. We can either do uh, something called, 
um, completing the square, or we can actually do this with a trick. The trick I'm going to use here is I'm going to plug in values for this expression, the values of x, and I'm going to see which, which of the following, a, b, c, or d, gives me the same values as outputs. So if I plug in 0 for this expression, I get 4, right? Now, if, if any of the expressions from a through d are equivalent, this should also give me 4. So let's, let's check that out. For a, if I plug in 0, I get 3 squared plus 5. That's definitely not 4. So the answer is not a. If I plug in 0 for b, I get 3 squared minus 5. That's 4. So it could be b. So let's check c now. If I plug in um, 0 for c, I get negative 3 squared plus 5. That's 9 plus 5. That's 14. It's not c. And then for d, if I plug in 0, I also get 4. So it's either b or d. Now I'm going to try one more point. What I'm going to try is I'm going to try... Um, I'm going to try 3. If I plug in 3, let's see what happens. If I plug in 3, I get 9 plus 18 plus 4. 9 plus 4 is 13. 13 plus 18 is 31. So 3 comma 31 is another point. So let's try B and D. So for B, if I plug in 3, I get 30, uh, sorry, I get 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 squared is 36 minus 5. Um, that's, that works. So if D doesn't work, our answer is B. So if I plug in 3 for D, I actually get negative 5. So D is not the answer. The answer is B. So let's move on to number 8. We have <clears throat> Ken is working this summer as a part of a crew on a farm. He earns $8 per hour for the first hours he works on this week. So $8 per hour for the first 10 hours. All right. Because of, because of his performance, his crew leader raises salary to $10 per hour. For the rest of the hours. For the rest of the week. So the rest. Ken saves 90% of his earnings. So 0.9 of his earnings. Again, write all of these mathematically to help you to, you know, to save some time. What is the least number of hours he must work for the rest of the week to save $270? So the keyword here is the rest of the week. So we don't care about the first $80. Um, we, 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 we do. We're going to add that. But... We care about the hours that he needs to work after the 10 hours. So we need an equation for earnings first. Earnings is equal to $80 that he makes for the 10 hours plus X amount of hours that he works times $10 an hour. And this should equal 270. So let's plug this earnings in into this equation and solve. So we get 0.9 times 80 plus 10x. That's equal to 270. We have one variable, one equation. We can solve this. 90% of 80, that's 72. And again, we can't use a calculator here, but you can just easily do this by multiplying 9 times 8 and, and you know getting 72. And then 0.9 of 10x, that's just 9x, and that's equal to 270. So 9x equals 270 minus 72. That's 198. Divide both sides by 9. We get x equals 22. So our answer is C. All right, number 9. <clears throat> Ooh, okay, this was a long one. Marissa needs to hire at least 10 staff members for an upcoming project. So at least, least 10 staff members. So I'll just write 10 staff. Uh, the, sta the staff members will be made up of janitor or junior directors who will be paid $640 per week and senior directors will be paid $880 per week. Her budget for paying the staff members is no more than $9,007 per week. She must hire at least three junior directors and at least one senior director. So at least three junior and at least one senior. Which of the following system of equalities represents this if X is the number of juniors and Y is the number of seniors. So X needs to be um, greater than or equal to three, right? Because at least three. And Y also needs to be greater than or equal to one. So let's cancel the ones that don't have those. So we're actually only left with A and B. We also know that she can have at least 10 staff members, so 10 or more, right? So X plus Y, which is the total amount of staff members, needs to be greater than or equal to 10. So the answer is B. And again, we don't have to check the earnings part because we know that the only one that require, that meets the three requirements that we checked is B, so the answer is B. All right, number 10. <clears throat> number 10, we have AX to the third, AX to the third plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero. 
and the equation above a, b, c, and d are constants. So constants just mean, you know, there's some numbers that we don't know, like they, this could be four or five, etc. cetera. Um, if the equation has roots negative one, negative three, and five, which of the following is a factor of ax to the third plus bx, I'm sorry, ax to the third um, plus bx squared plus cx plus d? Okay, interesting, very interesting question. So this is actually a pretty confusing question because the, the thing that first comes to my mind is like, okay, we need to maybe like do some sort of synthetic division to find, you know, what's left and maybe we get something like one of these. But actually there's an easier way to do this because it tells us the roots and I actually just noticed that right now. So it gives us the roots as negative one, negative three, and five. And what it means to be a factor is if the factor, if you plug in one of the roots to the factor, the expression of the factor should be zero. And what I mean by that is, for example, we know that x plus three has to be a factor of this because if I plug in negative three here, this becomes a zero, right? And that's that's why we do factoring because the factors or the roots uh, when plugged in into the factors should give us a zero. And in this case, x plus three is not one of the answers. However, x plus one is one of the answers, right? And if we plug in negative one here, we get zero. So the answer is B. This is a very interesting question. And I think, honestly, a pretty difficult one. You have to notice something, you know, very clever. Okay, 11. The expression X to the negative two, Y to the one half over, I always write things slanted. Let me try to write that better. Oops, okay, now it's slanted the other way. There we go x to the one third and then y to the negative one where x is greater than one and y is greater than one is equivalent to which the following okay so it seems to me here that all we have to do is simplify this expression using our rules where x over x to the a over x to the b is equal to x to the a minus b right so in this case we're dividing two uh you know variables with some power with the same base so we subtract their exponents. So we get x to the negative two over, so we're gonna, I'm gonna do this first, x to the negative two over x to the one third. This is equal to x to the negative two minus one third. And this is just equal to x, so we can common denominator here and we get x to the negative uh, seven over three, I believe, yeah. And then for the y, we do the same thing y to the one half over y to the negative one. This is y to the one half minus negative one. This is y to the one half plus one. This is y to the three halves. So we can rewrite this whole expression as x to the negative seven thirds, y to the three halves. And I don't see that as an answer. So we got to do some manipulation here, it looks like. Um, okay, so let's see. So it seems to me that they put the x's on the bottom and they actually split it up. Um, so I can rewrite this as, let me clear the screen actually. So we have x to the negative 7 thirds and then y to the 3 halves. So we have, a, we have a property where x to the negative a is equal to 1 over x to the a. And this is a mathematical convention um, and that's the reason for why this is true. So we can rewrite this whole expression as y to the 3 halves over x to the 7 thirds. And now maybe, maybe you can uh, guess the answer here. If not, we can still split this up. Y to the 3 halves is just Y times Y to the 1 half, right? And that's just square root of Y. So it seems to me it's either B, C, or D. And then on the bottom, we have X to the 7 thirds, which is X squared times X to the 1 third, right? That's what we did. And X to the 1 third is just the cube root, the cube root of X. And remember, the cube root of X is uh, the reason for that is because x to the a over b is just equal to the eighth root, sorry, the bth root of x to the power of a. So that's why that's true. So the answer is d. I might have went a little bit too fast on that one. And if I did, I encourage you to just review some of the exponent rules. All right, now I'm tired of that color. Let's switch colors. There we go. Okay, number 12. <clears throat> The function f is defined by f of x is equal to x plus 3 times x plus 1. 
The graph of f in the xy plane is a parabola. Okay, that makes sense, right? Because if we multiply this out, we get x squared terms, which means it's a parabola. Which of the following intervals contains the x coordinate of the vertex of the graph of f? Okay, so this is a, to me, this is a very weird question because um, it, it seems like we, you know, we can find the x coordinate of the, of the parabola or of the vertex of the parabola, but they ask us which interval the x coordinate lies in. So that's kind of weird. I mean, I think there's a there's a clever way to do this, which is to find the roots um, and see, you know, notice that the in the middle of the roots is the x coordinate of the vertex. But I'm going to do this a little bit different actually. I'm just going to multiply this out, and so I'll show you what I do after that. So x squared plus three x plus x plus 3 which is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 3 and I can just use the formula where the x coordinate is negative b over 2a right and that 4 is our b and 1 is our a so this is just a negative 4 over 2 times 1 which is negative 2 this is our x coordinate of our vertex right and if you don't remember this formula this gives us the x coordinate of the vertex of a parabola and the only one that contains this uh, you know contain Negative 2 is in the interval from negative 3 to 1, right? So the answer is just B. A weird question. Definitely a weird question. Okay, number 13. Which of the following expressions is equivalent to x squared minus 2x minus 5 over x minus 3? Okay. Um, so for this, honestly, it seems like they did some weird manipulation to to the expression that we have, but I'm just gonna plug in values and see which one gives me equivalent values. So what I'm gonna start with is zero. If I plug in zero, I get negative five over negative three, which is just five over three. So let's see which ones give me five over three. For A, if I plug in zero, I get negative five plus 20 over three, which is, um, uh, let's see, 20 over three is like around seven, and then seven minus five is around two. So this, this might be 5 over 3. Let's actually just figure out if it is or not. So it's, we can get a common denominator. We got negative 15 plus 20 over 3. So yeah, this is 5 over 3. So A is a possibility. So let me write that here. So A, B, C, D. So A is a possibility. So one check. All right, let's check B. So for B, we plug in 0. We get negative 5 minus plus, sorry, plus 10 thirds. So if negative 5 plus 20 thirds is 5 over 3, then negative 5 plus 10 thirds is definitely not 5 over 3. So B is not an answer. For C, we plug in 0, we get 1 minus, sorry, plus 2 thirds, right, because negative and negative. This is going to be 3 plus 2 over 3. This is 5 over 3. So C is a possibility. And then D, we plug, we plug in 0, we get 1 mi or plus 2 thirds. Oh, sorry, we just did D, actually. Wait, so hold on. So D is a possibility. Now let's check C. So we get 1 plus 8 thirds. So this is definitely not a possibility, right? Um, and you can check that yourself. And I know that because 1 plus 2 thirds is a possibility, therefore 1 plus 8 thirds is not. So it's either A or D. Let's, tr let's check one more point, right? Let's check, um, let's check 1. So if I, if I plug in 1 here, I get 1 minus 2 minus 5, which is negative uh, 6 over negative 2, which is 3. So so uh, the you know either A or D should give me three. So if any of them give me three, then we pick our answer. Or if the other one doesn't give me three, then we know that one of that one other one or the other is the answer. So A, uh, we get negative four plus twenty thirds, or sorry twenty over negative two. So this is negative four minus ten. This is negative fourteen. So it looks like the A is not the answer. Let's just make sure D gives us three. If we plug in one, we get two plus uh, 2 plus 2 over 2, which is 3. So the answer is D. <clears throat> okay, number 14. A shipping service restricts the dimensions of, of the boxes it will ship for a certain type of service. The restriction states that for boxes shaped like a rectangular prism, the sum of the perimeter of the base of the box and the height of the box cannot exceed 130 inches. Okay, let's reread that. The restriction states that for boxes shaped like a rectangular prism, the sum of the perimeter of the base of the box, so the sum 
of the perimeter of the base of the box and the height of the box cannot exceed 130 inches. So the perimeter and the height cannot exceed 130. Okay. The perimeter of the base is determined using the width and length. So length and width, right? So it's 2W plus 2L. Uh, if a box has a height of 60 inches and its length is two times, 2.5 times the width, which inequality shows the allowable width X and inches of the box? Okay, this is a lot to take in, but basically we can write an equation where 2W plus 2L, which is the perimeter, plus 60 has to be less than, um, less than 130, or maybe less than or equal to 130. Now, we know that, we know that the width... Oh, no, sorry, the length is 2.5 times the width. So we can write, instead of a length, we can write 2.5 width. So this is 2w plus 2.5 times 2 width, so 5 width, 5 width, plus 60 is less than or equal to 130. And obviously the width has to be greater than 0, so we'll consider that at the end as well. So we get 7w, or in this case 7x, right? They say it's called x. 7x plus 60 is less than or equal to 130. Subtract 60 on both sides, we get 7x is less than or equal to um, 70. So x is less than or equal to 10. So the answer is A. And again, it has to be greater than 0, obviously. There's no such thing as negative length. So the answer is A. Fifteen. The expression 1 third x squared minus 2 can be rewritten as one third times x minus k times x plus k, where k is a positive constant. What is the value of k? So, what they're asking us to do here is just factor this out, right? So let's do that. So the first thing that they want us to do is actually just factor out a one third. So let's let's do that. So we get one third times x squared minus six. And if you don't know how I got 6, pause the video and analyze for a second. I factored out a 1 third. So if I distribute this again, distribute this again, I get 1 third x squared minus 6 over 3, right? Which is 2. So this makes sense. Now we got to notice that this right here is a difference of 2 squares. So we can rewrite that as 1 third times x minus square root of 6 times x plus the square root of 6. So k here is clearly the square root of 6. So the answer is d. All right, I'm getting tired of this color. Let me change it. All right, <clears throat> so now, <coughs> now we're going to move on to the free response questions. Okay, so again, the free response questions start out easy, just like the multiple choice, and then they get hard towards the end. Okay, so 16, we have if x, or sorry, if 2x plus 8 equals 16, what is the value of x plus 4? So x plus 4. Okay, so I'm just going to find x first, and then, uh, actually, I, okay, so I noticed a very clever way to find x plus 4 here. If I, f if I divide everything by 2, notice what happens. Divide that by 2, divide that by 2, divide that by 2. I get x plus 4 equals 16 over 2, which is 8. So I actually just found the value of x plus 4 instantly. So the answer is just 8. And if you didn't see that, you know, it's, it's a weird thing to see. If you didn't see that, you can just solve for x and then just add 4 to it, right? Same thing. 17. Okay, so it looks long. Let's, uh, let's draw it out. We have some weird looking thing. Okay, that did not draw that well. Let me redraw this. I need to relax with the proportions so everything can fit. Okay, this is not a good drawing, but we get the point, right? Okay, so we have N... Oops. We have N, P, Q, R, and M. 
and we know this is 60 we know this is 70 so that's probably what's going to tell us what it's just going to tell us that and, and what we want to do is is solve for something so let's just let's just read what what it says to solve for what is the measure in degrees of qmr so q m r so this right here is what we're looking for i'm going to call it theta and then we're going to solve for theta okay um what can we do here what can we do so we know okay this is actually a terrible drawing because this was supposed to be here so okay um so pretend this thing does not exist i'm not sure why i did that okay so we know that 60 and 70 are part of this triangle right here and we know that a triangle adds up to 180 so this angle has to be 180 minus 60 which is 120 and then minus 70 which is 50 so this has to be 50 okay now uh, I'm not quite sure maybe uh, let's see maybe we'll figure out why we found that afterwards but I think a better angle to find here is this one right here and we'll need one more so we'll have to find this angle probably as well so to find this one well we know that this there's a line here right and if this part of it is 60 this is this needs to this is a supplement of that so this needs to be 120 right now what do we have left here um okay let's see what do we what else do we need to find okay okay they also tell us that Let's see, MQ and NR intersect at point P, and NP is equal to QP. NP is equal to QP. Okay. Um, and MP is equal to PR. Oh, okay, that helps us. So MP is equal to PR. So we know that th this theta... Is equal to this theta here as well okay that helps us a lot actually so we can say that theta plus theta plus 120 has to be 180 right now we can just solve for one of the thetas so 2 theta equals I'm gonna subtract 120 on both sides 60 so theta is equal to 30 all right so that took a second but we have to notice something or actually maybe we have to read the problem so that was that was my mistake I'm not reading the problem all right number 18 <coughs> The number of radians in a 720 degree angle can be written as a pi, where a is a constant, what is the value of a? Okay, so we know that pi is equal to 180 degrees, right? 2 pi is equal to 360 degrees. So whatever we multiply this by, we multiply this degrees by. So 3 pi, well, that's just 3 times 180. And 3 times 180 is, I mean, let's see, 180 times 3, 0, 4, 2, 5, so 540. And then let's do one more. So 4 pi, well, that's just 4 times 180, right? So 180 times 4, 0, 2, 3, 7. Oh, and look, look at that. That's actually 720. So 4 pi is equal to 720. And they're saying what is the value of A, which is the constant next to pi. So A is just we're almost done here all right number 19 okay so let's see the graph of a line in the xy plane passes through the point 1 comma 4 and crosses the x-axis at the point 2 comma 0 all right so we can easily define this line right we have two points so that's good um, the line crosses the y-axis at the point 0 comma b what is the value of b Okay, so basically what they're asking us to do is evaluate this line once we find its equation at x equals 0. And then we get some y value, which is equal to b, and we want b. We want b. Okay, so how, how do we find the equation of a line? Well, we know that y equals mx plus b, right? And don't confuse the b. Actually, the b here is the same thing as the b that they want. So, um, okay, yeah, so... Now, to make this line unique, or to find the, the equation of this specific line, we need to find the slope and the b value. So first, let's find the slope, and then we'll solve for the b value, which is what they're asking for, actually. So the slope is m, and it's equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And this is equal to 0 minus 4, right? This is y2, this is y1, this is x1, this is x2. 
So 0 minus 4 over 2 minus 1. So negative 4 over 1. So just negative 4. So y equals a negative 4x plus b. Now to find the b value, we can use one of the points that we have. It doesn't matter which one. We substitute x and y and we solve for b. So I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a second one. It looks easy. So zero is y, so zero equals negative four, x is two, so negative four times two plus b. We can easily solve for b, so we get zero equals negative eight. Negative eight plus b. So b is just equal to eight. So the answer is eight. <clears throat> All right, last question. Let me change the color for the last question. Let's do a cool color. We'll do. We'll do like turquoise. I mean, it's sort of blue, but. All right, that's cool. Okay, so number twenty. The expression above can be written in the form a y squared plus b, where a and b are constants. What is the value of a plus b? So. Them asking for the, for the value of a plus b, they're, they're sort of forcing us to find the value of a and b. So to get that expression we have on top into this format, we need to simplify it, right? So we have 7,532 plus 100y squared plus 10 times 10y squared minus 110. So first, I'm going to distribute this 10. So I'm going to just rewrite this whole thing. So 7,532 plus 100y squared plus 100y squared minus, okay, that's going to be huge, uh, 1,100, right? 10 times 110. All right, now we just, you know, simplify, get rid of the parentheses. So we get 7,532 plus 100y squared plus 100y squared minus 1,100. Okay, so that's 200y squared, so 200y squared. 7,532 minus 1,100, that's positive 6,432. So, and they asked for the value of a, a plus b. So a is 200, right? Because th they said we can write it in this format, and we did, and then this is b. So if we add the two, we get 200 plus 6,432. And again, don't mistake this by adding the whole expression. We're just adding the constants together because that's what they asked for. This is not the same thing as the expression. This is the same. This is 6,640. Uh, so sorry, 6,632. Uh, 6, so the answer to this question is 6,632. And that right there is the full section three of test number seven.